Wait, what? There's two? Yep. Day 16 now and 17 later. Hey everyone, welcome to Squaretober, my own personal art challenge where I take a small piece of 4x4 four four inch watercolor paper, do a little tiny piece of art on it, and then upload a video every day in October. Except I took yesterday off, and that's why we are doing two today. So yeah, I'm really glad I took yesterday off because it was beautiful and um, as I suspected, the weather is going to change pretty drastically. And we enjoyed 50 degree, we've had 50, 60, 70 degree weather. And tomorrow they warned us it might even go down in the morning as, as cold as the teens, probably the high teens. But they said, yeah, you better pull in your, any plants that you want to save, even your mums. I thought those things were like bulletproof because they're, their fall plants, but no, you have to bring them in and you have to make sure your hose is disconnected if you have it connected outside and stuff. Anyway, I don't know if you guys want to hear about that. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you about what I worked on. Sometimes I get ideas when I'm doing things like folding laundry and I'm just thinking random thoughts. I'm not thinking about anything in particular. I'm just thinking about like the events of the day or things that I have to get done. Or I don't know, sometimes my mind just wanders all over the place. And um, I was thinking about a quilt that I made a couple of years ago. And this quilt is basically laid out in bricks. So they're, they're, all the rows are the same um, height, but the columns are different. So the brick, some of the bricks are narrow and the columns are narrow and some of them are wider. And um, they're random colors of fall. So there's like a, like a deep forest green and then there's like a um, sort of a smoky teal color and there's squash and there's pumpkin spice and there's like an alizarin crimson color in it. They're just beautiful colors. I started to think about how the, the that pattern would look after you've slept in the bed and the bed is not made and it's just rumpled, you know, and not flat, but I didn't get the quilt out and try to do that with it. I just let that be the guide to what I was thinking about. And that's what I ended up with on the paper. The only thing is, once I put the lines down, it began to remind me of um, a terrace, like a stone terrace. And, you know, maybe warped though, like a warped stone terrace. <laughs> And so that's why I chose the colors that I did. And also, I just wanted to do something more subdued, not so... I feel like I do a lot of really bright colors, almost garish. And I like that, but sometimes I want something a little more muted and a little more, um, I don't know, calming? If, if that's... if stone could be calming... And I just used leftover paint that was on my ceramic palette and I used my water brush. It was, so I did more of a, a wet on dry technique. I didn't, I didn't do any wet on wet on this really, um, except maybe to just drop in a little color in some of the smaller pieces of what I like to call stone. And I wanted to, I just, you know, it was just very meditative. I know this is probably not the most exciting piece of art, but I enjoyed it so much and I like the effect of it. And I feel like I learned something while I was doing it and that um, it's going to serve me in the future, sort of. I'm filing away the colors and how they went together and how they mingled. It's, it's almost like a color study in a way. Um, really more than 
uh, some kind of sophisticated piece of art. Clearly, it's not. It's very simple. But it actually took a while. It took, um, I think it took me over an hour to do it. For as simple as it is, you would think it would take 15 minutes. But no, because you have to let everything dry. And then if you're going to layer it, you have to let it dry or dry it with a hair dryer. Mainly for these two days, what I really wanted to do was just explore. And I'm kind of missing that from my drawing class. I had the best teacher for my drawing class. And, um, you know, we had certain assignments. And yes, we definitely wanted to have a good aesthetic. But it wasn't necessarily about something you would end up hanging in a museum somewhere, but more about making an exploration and making it look as aesthetically pleasing and, and, you know, meet the requirements of the assignment and so forth. Anyway, I've been missing that. So that's kind of, I gave myself permission the last two days to, to do that kind of thing. And I did something completely different for day 17. I did all wet on wet. I did the swag lamp because I loved the way the light was thrown onto the walls. And I started um, by putting just a wet wash of plain, clean water down um, everywhere except around the glass part of the lamp. And then I took masking fluid, and while the pa paper was still wet, I sprinkled masking fluid on it. And this is not my idea. I got this off of Lindsay Wyrick's channel. I'll I'll find that video and I'll put it in the in the a link to it in the description. This is the lamp that I'm basing this painting on. I found it on Amazon. Um, I might have to buy this lamp because look how beautiful that is. The way it throws the colored light onto the wall. And that's why I needed to use masking fluid. There would have been no way. So I let the masking fluid dry and then I went back over it again with clean water to put another um, layer of wetness down. And then I um, put kind of a brownish wash for the background. And you can see here how the masking fluid is not as sharp as it would have been um, if I had put it down on dry paper. And this is hot pressed paper. If I had put it, if I had done this on cold pressed paper, I think the diffused effect would have been more pronounced even. But you can do this on hot pressed paper for sure. So once I put the, the wash down, then I went ahead and splattered some um, nickel yellow azo and um, a mixture of blues and some alizarin crimson. Or actually, I think I used magenta for that part and alizarin crimson in the lamp. And I let that dry and I pulled off the, the masking fluid and then I went over the masking fluid with very diluted colors like the ones that the colors that were thrown against the wall. But because they're so diluted, it lets it seem like it's colored light going around the lamp. Now, no, this didn't turn out perfectly. Um, this is the first time I've tried this, but that's the whole point of this exploration is to try some new things, uh, things I haven't already done a million times. It's kind of fun to explore those things on small pieces of art. It's not as intimidating. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't get the mosaic part. I thought I was recording and I wasn't, but they're just basically, uh, I put paint on and use the very tip of the brush and just put little dots of paint, and that is the glass tile mosaic. And you definitely can put your background down and then paint darker over it, which is what I did. And I love the way this turned out for a first time. So anyway, that was my two days of art. You guys, hope everything is going well for you, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye, you guys.